so common causes of pain, I think you all know that uh, the most common cause of pain, the most common reason that, uh, that patients will see a physician is lower back pain. Okay, lower back pain and arthritis pain account for half of all muscular disease diagnoses. On top of that, when you look at just lower back pain, if you look at the patients who are under 45 years old, the most the leading cause of disability in those patients is, is lower back pain. That's a major, major problem. You know, chronic pain costs America $635 billion a year. $635 billion a year. A lot of that is from things like disability. So if we can't keep our population healthy, it costs all of us. Our taxes go up, our healthcare costs go up, not to mention quality of life. Our friends, our family, you know, they're not, they're not happy and that's not good. There's no price to that, right? That's, that's, that's priceless. But that's one of the leading causes of disability under the uh, age of 45. 26 million adults per year experience frequent back pain. About 15% of Americans who experience back pain that lasts for greater than two weeks. And as we all know, if those things aren't taken care of quickly, they'll progress to something called chronic pain, which becomes a totally different beast and a different way of, of handling that. Arthritis and chronic joint problems affect about 70 million individuals. 18 million RSC arthritis, about 2 million are rheumatoid arthritis. So here's the different types of pain. And we kind of briefly touched on that when we looked at the definitions. We have nociceptive pain. Uh, those things can be things like, you know, burns, cuts, uh, you know, bones broken, things like that. Neuropathic pain, though it's nerve damage. Uh, those kind of diseases are like herpes zoster or diabetic peripheral neuropathy. Um, sciatic pain, radiculopathy, those are all definition of neuropathic pain. Inflammatory pain, arthritis. Okay, that's the most common cause of a neuropathic pain, or inflammatory pain, excuse me. Inflammatory pain can also ref refer to autoimmune disorders where you have inflammation. You know, one of the things uh, um, uh, that, that people don't think of too, typically with inflammatory pain are skin disorders like psoriasis and psoriatic lesions, um, but those are all inflammatory conditions. And then finally, central pain amplification, central sensitization. Some of those diseases are things like fibromyalgia, CRPS, or RSD. So we have to understand what category that patient's in. If we don't understand what category that patient's in, then we can't treat them correctly. You know, typically we just showed you now four different definitions of pain, right? Four different types of pain. You right now, I tell you, right now you know more than most physicians out there. Literally, by just knowing that. Because what happens when most physicians think pain, pain is just someone complaining. No, it's actually those four different categories. And if you don't put them in those four different categories, there's no way you can go down the subcategories and, and go down the right pathways to treat the patient correctly. So again, other categories of pain. Now, you've, if you've defined the types of pain, we've got to now split up into categories of pain. So there's acute, chronic, and palliative. Acute is basically short term, you know, typically you know, three months or less. Chronic is typically three to six months or more, and palliative is essentially just we're trying to keep the patient happy, we're trying to keep the patient you know, feeling okay, and they have a disease process that's really not uh, going to improve or get better. 